Yo, and welcome to the iSpooge Daily channel. This is an experimental tech and media brand. We're doing daily 20 minute videos on the topic of a homeless guy, this or that, since I'm homeless and homelessness is not having a choice. Once I have a choice, I can't come back and relive these perspectives. So I'm just forcing myself to go 20 minutes. No more, no less every day. And usually don't have any kind of topic that is with an earlier format of the channel. So yeah, yesterday I published a video and I unpublished it for a little bit and I actually figured out how to blur out a portion with FFmpeg commands and reassemble the file. But then I went through the YouTube studio and figured out how to do a fixed blur using the same parameters. Um, the reason it was something I noticed as I was recording, but I didn't want to stop, was my location was revealed in a tab. And at first I'm like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. It's been long enough. I can reveal my location. It's fine. And then paired with, you know, the new phone number I got has an area code here as well. So I'm like, all right, cat's out of the bag. But then I decided... that, you know, I'm just going to keep the lid on a little bit longer. So I made the video unlisted and for the night. And then today, I, this morning, I figured out how to do that blur and then made it public again. And good learning experience. I could have just stopped the recording and redone it yesterday, but I... I went back and forth and then, yeah, ultimately I used the internet access last night to be able to change the metadata, which was a really nice capability. Didn't have to drive all the way to the library to change the privacy setting. But yeah, now that the data is exhausted already after 48 hours, uh, it would have been nice to get the most out of that trial, but something just sucked down all the data and So when I actually get a plan, how much data is going to get sucked down without my consent again, right? Like, I don't even know what, what used the data. So anyway, yeah, um, you know, like in January, I could have not called myself homeless, but I didn't feel secure at work. And indeed, by like mid-February, I was put into a double bind by the store director and I had to quit. So with this workplace too, it's like I've already spotted the narcissists who are there and who are preying on me. And this isn't supposed to be like a drama channel or gossip or anything like that, but it's contemporary. Like this is what a homeless guy deals with. Oh, excuse me. This is what the common denominator me deals with who can't seem to do anything Maybe I just need to be more likable and yet, you know, it's everything is my fault. I get it. But the fact that I used to be likable, used to have money, used to this and that, and now I don't means I fried my brain somewhere or something, even though that's not true. I've just spiritually evolved. Like, you know, it's always the low vibration people who are throwing the accusations around. So, oh, you throw accusations of... I know all that matters is I get exhausted, right? So I made a statement a couple days ago about how like the controllers have the stated mission of infiltrating every organization of two or more people. Meaning if you're forming a company with someone else, the other person is either controlled or directly involved. company of two, three, four, five people, there might be one or two other non-controlled people, but even, like, even I'm probably controlled in some way, in some ways. I mean, I am narrowly, I'm physically controlled. I mean, 
when I was between jobs, I physically could not leave the area, right? So it's like now I'm at the point where I might have enough money in the bank to like drive to the nearest big city and like maybe, which would be San Francisco where I've spent my entire adult life since college where I became homeless in fact. I'm not just gonna be like, you know what, I'm homeless, I'm gonna go to San Francisco, get on the welfare, get on the drugs. No, that's where I became homeless. My last apartment was out in the sunset at on 48th near Irving and like right right next to Golden Gate Park and Ocean, Ocean Beach. And I had that apartment for quite a while, like well, I guess just over a year 2015 16 Maybe two or three, a while. I was there for a while and I was at my previous apartment in Nopa at Divis and Fulton for at least a year or two before that. So it's not like I'm just some transient. No, I got out of college and I went to Mountain View and then I did some freelance stuff and then I moved to San Francisco for some work. I had one, two, like four tech jobs in San Francisco. I'm not just a drug tourist who's gonna go to San Francisco, man. But that would be the best thing to do. Like if for some reason this job didn't work out, the next best thing to do would be to just go to San Francisco, which is where I'm basically from. Like I don't identify at all with the place that I grew up, which is also the place I went to college. But in college, I didn't really I definitely disconnected with all the people that I knew before college, all the just towny people. So, you know, that was when, in terms of the three ladder social system, I was going from labor to gentry. I might have gone gentry to elite when I was in the Bay Area in some of those San Francisco tech jobs. But with the amount of like getting onto the labor ladder. I don't know if it's harder to get on any particular ladder. I think I'm just more of a gentry person than a labor person. Like I'm not gonna be accepted onto the labor ladder. Like even if I wanted to now, I've already showed myself to be an outsider with the people at my job. And this is a small town, so like everybody knows everybody. Like. And I've got a extremely uncommon name. So my name, if it travels faster than me, I'm not like, are we talking about the same Jacob? You know what I mean? Are we talking about the same Harlan? Uh, obviously. So yeah. Sort of like birds have predictable behavior, people have pretty predictable behavior too, but it depends on where they came from, which caste they're in, which social ladder they're on, same thing. They're called castes in India, they're called social ladder in terms of that essay here. So... Probably the only place I'm really going to fit in is like Gentry 3. I could maybe fit in in Labor 1 if I could establish myself and become respectable leader in this and that. But yeah, until I get the resources needed to succeed in a business in Denver, like, I don't know, a phone... Well, maybe if you want to hook it up to your computer, you still have a phone. <laughs> Why isn't the web browser on your phone good enough? Why you got to hook it up to your computer, huh? Well, because I don't have a phone that works. Maybe if I had a battery. Well, maybe if you really got a battery before you got phone service. <laughs> 
That's how I hear people. So yeah, I feel like I had like some solid topics to talk about when I came and set up here, but just like, you know, it's, it's always like the tech that emasculates you. It's like, you know what? You've got this plan. I'm going to pull your pants down. You know, it's like the tech never works when it's supposed to work. In fact, this is the third take because the microphone was muted on the second one. And on the first one, it was just bad. Like... I was just like overly yeah yay technology so <sighs> sitting here like you notice I'm just like looking around looking around looking around so the brain is split. We've got asymmetrical lobes. We've got, I mentioned this at the end of one of my videos a few days ago. The left hemisphere controls the right hand and that is your logic and your focused tasks. Like when a bird is digging into a tree. And then your right brain controls your left hand and that's like looking around. So it's my right brain that keeps making me look around and be like, are we safe? Are we safe? Even though we're focusing, are we safe? So my right brain needs to be a lot more active than most people because I'm in survival mode and most people aren't necessarily, but the right brain will get bored and find things to do, which is part of, I don't even know. But yeah, my right brain is active. And so I think my I was gonna say like maybe that's why like starving artists is sort of a thing. Like they're more vulnerable, so they're like more looking around, their right brain is more active, the creative side, yada yada. So yeah, um yesterday I uploaded a video. Man, I'm just like so thrown off by this phone thing not working because now I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I just going to pay 90 bucks for service? I can't be mad at the phone carrier. It was my fault. But it's just like it would have been nice to get like, you know, a couple days of use before the thing ran out. And like, what if it wasn't capped at 250 megs? Like how many gigs would have been downloaded? Like, I don't even know. I'm using Linux too. Like, I don't even know what used all that data. Like only 1.3 megabytes have been used since I turned the computer on, allegedly. So yeah, I don't have mobile internet anymore. That's really annoying. I don't know what used it. I mean, I was ready to just spend 90 bucks yesterday, but now I've got a little taste of the trial. Now I don't really want to spend 90 bucks. And that's for the unlimited plan. Like if I buy the 15 gig plan, I just don't trust that 15 gigs is enough. So, God. I thought maybe today I would go into like how I figured out to split the video. Like, you know. This is probably the worst video I've ever done. But yeah, here's showing up. I just don't have a ton to talk about because I'm like, I thought I had phone stuff and then I just got like rug pulled. Now I don't have phone anymore. And I like specifically came here because I thought I had phone. Like I was thinking about it all day today. I was like, all right, gonna get off and
Yes, I was looking at the person who walked by because it seemed like they were looking at me and, ah, uh, good Lord, I need a workspace. Like I was talking about in yesterday's video, I, I'm claustrophobic. I should have just gone to storage and gone to the gym and taken a shower, done what I'm supposed to. I just got excited. I wanted to come here and are we noticing a theme emerging? I come here and I do what I'm not supposed to do and then stuff doesn't work out. Would it not work out even if I did do what I'm supposed to? Maybe, but at least what I'm supposed to do would have been done. Cause now I've got to like, just go to storage, like knowing that my internet's not working, like think about, oh, am I gonna figure that out? You know, put this stuff away. It was a new era. All I have to do is pay 90 bucks and I've got a phone plan, but then I've also got to pay for a new battery. I've still got to go to place to see if I can get a battery locally or order it on Amazon. If I order it on Amazon, it'll take a few days to get here probably because I don't have Prime. Oh yeah. So a bum gets a seven day phone trial get zero phone calls, zero texts, and all his data is used up by some background process. Well, that's karma for you. You must have done something real bad. Yes. I almost believe that myself. I mean, you can't win them all. But I don't want to be on a losing streak, you know? I'm just like thinking, I can't be a dish. You know, my, my boss said it would be fine if I wanted to just stay a dishwasher, didn't want to move up or anything up. I'm hella happy just being a dishwasher, but the thing is that's the entry level position too. So if we ever want to hire anybody else, which obviously, yeah, uh, guess where they're gonna start? They're gonna start as dishwasher and guess that's what that's gonna do. Cut my hours, thus cut my money. So I can't get too comfortable as is the theme, you know? Like I can't just always be available this and that because then I'll be taken for granted and not appreciate it. Like I know that whole routine, yes. The common denominator is me. So, you know, like that's just how it is. I'm, I'm not a nice guy. Nice means dumb actually. It doesn't just mean kind. Nice means like gullible, naive. It's a bad thing to be nice. It's good to be kind, but there's plenty of like stereotypes or memes or whatever about like don't mistake my kindness for weakness you know what i mean nice is weak kind is not weak i'm kind but my kindness is mistaken for weakness that's not to say that i'm kind and strong i am also pretty weak so yes i'm kind but that's not inherently weak i'm weak because i had a weak dad my dad didn't teach me how to be strong my dad's a little coward and So am I. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree there. I'd like to not be one. Like at very least I don't drown myself with alcohol and you know, like I'm, I'm getting out of being a people pleaser. Like I've never been an addict. Well, you know, I've been kind of an alcoholic, but that was when I was making a ton of money, not while I was homeless. It didn't lead to me being homeless, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, we're hitting the 20 minute mark. I have no idea what I even talked about, but we showed up. Thanks for joining. Hopefully you got something from this. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Even though I don't read emails or anything quite yet, the mobile should hopefully fix that with time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.